latest Rock versus Roman Reigns rumors this WrestleMania season are getting absolutely ridiculous to a point where one has to wonder if they do happen, what the hell is going on in Stamford, Connecticut under this current administration? Can you imagine if The Rock won the 2024 Royal Rumble being discussed? Can you imagine Roman Reigns not being at an international WrestleMania level pay-per-view in front of 60,000 people? It's being discussed. Can you imagine Cody Rhodes once again going into WrestleMania with a mid-card feud again not finishing his story? It could happen. All this and the rumors right here on Off The Script. Also, there are several within AEW talents within AEW embarrassed by Tony Khan's latest Twitter tirade about Jinder Mahal. You don't say all this today on Off The Script. We will start with The Rock. Could The Rock win this year's Men's Royal Rumble and earn a shot at WrestleMania 40 and the Universal Heavyweight Championship in Roman Reigns? According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, The Rock is one of the obvious favorites to win the Over the Top Rope Battle Royal, along with CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Gunther, you could even throw L.A. Knight and Randy Orton into the mix of potential winners there. I said it as a side note. This year's Royal Rumble may stand out as one of the top with the level of performers in the Royal Rumble this year, giving you a sense, a true sense of unpredictability for the Royal Rumble. It could be anybody's ballgame. Now, The Rock returns, obviously, on the day one edition of Monday Night Raw, took a shot at Roman Reigns by referencing the head of the table when he told the fans, well, where am I going to go out to eat tonight and where should I sit? Should I sit at a tabletop? Should I sit at the bar? Or should I sit at the head of the table? Obviously, the head of the table is one of Roman Reigns' many nicknames. Since then, the rumors have started circulating that Johnson, The Rock, and Reigns could collide for the first time at either the Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania 40 with The Observer recently reporting that Reigns and Johnson was the frontrunner to headline the second night of WrestleMania 40 in April. The newsletter mentioned the idea of The Rock entering the Men's Rumble as a surprise entrant late in the match. That's been discussed for the past several years, says Dave Meltzer. These internal talks coincided with the potential of Johnson headlining a recent WrestleMania Johnson revealed last year that he was locked in to face Reigns at WrestleMania 39 until those plans were scrapped. Now, why were those plans scrapped? It was because then the WWE knew exactly that they were selling the company. It's up, to, uh, it's up for debate and up in the air as to who they knew they were selling the company to. I think Vince McMahon pretty much had a damn good idea about where the company was being sold. So they probably had The Rock locked in or had at least an agreement from The Rock to do WrestleMania 39 in Los Angeles against Roman Reigns. It probably would have been a lot better for the story if The Rock lost to Roman last year for Cody to beat him this year. We wouldn't be in this situation with Cody this year because now it's all up in the air. But The Rock and WWE did not want to go and do it last year because they knew they were selling the company when and where, to who, again, it's up for debate. But they said, you know what, let's hold out, and we'll do WrestleMania 40, The Rock's final match. It'll be a big deal. It's uh, Ari Emanuel and TKO. They want it to be the biggest WrestleMania ever, blah, blah, blah. That's exactly why they did what they did. They held it out. They held off on it because they wanted it to take place at WrestleMania 40, even though The Rock says he was locked into face reigns last year. Now, The Rock said if that dream match were to happen, then he would want to do something unprecedented. In the end, he, Vince McMahon, and current WWE CEO Nick Khan were unable to come up with a plan to match those ambitions. Nevertheless, Johnson left the door open for WrestleMania 40. And The Rock went on social media again, on Instagram, I believe, and posted a very good 
video highlight reel about his return to Monday Night Raw at day one. And in the caption said, now let's get ready to do something that's never been done before or something along those lines. What does he mean by that? That's the second time he's mentioned that now in so many times that he's had an interview. We're going to do something unprecedented. We're going to do something that's never been done before. What does he mean by that? This is the first time he said it. I think it was during Pat McAfee. Now he's saying it again. Is that a glimpse into what we could potentially see? I'll get back to that in a little bit. The report noted that while nobody has advertised it and probably won't happen, The Rock, being the surprise entry in this year's Men's Royal Rumble, shouldn't be completely ruled out. I think it should be ruled out. I think that's a terrible idea. The ball is ultimately in Johnson's court. However, if Johnson isn't featured in the Men's Royal Rumble, then he could potentially earn a title shot against Reigns if the head of the table holds, or Roman Reigns, I should say, holds onto the Undisputed Universal Championship at the Royal Rumble, which he will, at the Elimination Chamber. In Australia next month, the Australian government has pitched for Johnson to perform at the event. As the Observer pointed out, the second world title challenge at WrestleMania is typically determined at the Elimination Chamber for WWE. Now, I want to I want to start here and then we'll get into the other rumor, which was just equally as ridiculous. Imagine the ball is ultimately in Johnson's court. Imagine, imagine Cody Rhodes having his balls in The Rock's hands. His future is in The Rock's hands. It's going to really show you what Dwayne Johnson is all about. It's going to really push the narrative of, yeah, The Rock is for the business and he's such a great guy and all this other shit. If The Rock comes in and tells Nick Khan, yeah, I think I should win the Royal Rumble. Yeah, you know what? I think I should win the Royal Rumble and go to WrestleMania and wrestle my family member. Because it's the biggest match that we could do, and it's the right place to do it. You know, fuck everything else that's happened in the absence of myself from WWE television. Cody, yeah, you know, he could, listen, man, he could wait another year, man. Where you have a WrestleMania next year? Las Vegas? I think that'd be great. Let's do it in Vegas next year. 41, Cody, you got it, brother. Good luck. Imagine, imagine The Rock holding Cody's balls in his hand. Cody's future is in The Rock's possession. Couldn't be me, man. What are you going to do? What are you going to have The Rock in the Royal Rumble? You're going to have The Rock win the Royal Rumble? Imagine Cody Rhodes and The Rock and CM Punk in the Royal Rumble, man. It's the final three, final four, final five. I mean... You are basically asking your crowd to just completely shit all over Cody Rhodes and CM Punk at that point. Or maybe even The Rock. I have no fucking idea which way the winds are going to swirl, man. But it don't look good for Cody Rhodes, I'll tell you that. If you give it to the fans, if you give it to the fans on who they want at WrestleMania, they're going to choose The Rock. Because The Rock hasn't been here. The Rock is the apple of everybody's eye. The Rock and Roman Reigns, according to these people, is more of a WrestleMania match than Roman versus Cody is. You're asking, you're asking the fans. You're really putting yourself in a position to take Cody Rhodes from this top-tier guy right now who's sold tickets left and right, sellouts left and right, people coming out to see Cody Rhodes, merchandise, number one merch seller in the company, number one baby face in the company, number one PR wet dream for any fucking wrestling company. Cody Rhodes, you're asking him, you're asking him to take another year off from this potentially to give way to The Rock, and then it's going to further ruin Cody Rhodes in the eyes of the fans. Nobody's going to take him as serious as they did when he first got here and where you built him up to. You're going to make everything on television completely fucking worthless at that point. We had to sit through five months of him with Brock Lesnar. You want to waste my fucking time and not give this man a WrestleMania main event and yet you put us through that bullshit and subjected us to that garbage which we still didn't get a fucking explanation for. You want me to be okay with that, right? You do know Cody, you know, if you give him the WrestleMania 41 main event, 
If you don't do it this year, you know how many people are going to give a shit about Cody Rhodes finishing his story? This, the, the, this story, whatever this fucking story is, this story that's being written, it's not going to get finished ever. I don't give a shit. When it does, that shit is going right into the fucking bargain bin at Barnes & Noble. Give me a fucking break. Nobody gives a shit. When Cody wins the title, that book will be read as fast as anything else, and it'll be on sale at Barnes & Noble in the fucking... Hey, I read this one already, man. Give me a fucking break. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You're really, 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 really playing with fire here. Whoever thinks The Rock winning the Royal... Now, this is a rumor. Whoever thinks Rock winning the Royal Rumble is a good idea... My God, man, you might, you might be the dumbest motherfucker, I think, that's ever existed in this space. That's an awful idea. What happened last time somebody affiliated with The Rock won the Royal Rumble? Remember that? Who was that? Who, 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 who was that, man? Roman Reigns? 2014, right? Remember that one? What happened then? You gave Roman Reigns a Royal Rumble win, a forced Royal Rumble win, and then... Trotted the rock out there in Philadelphia. Go figure. In Philadelphia and raised this guy's hand and he got booed out of the building. Go ahead. Play with fire, WWE. I dare you. When people are anticipating Cody and CM Punk, you're going to throw the rock into the mix to win the Royal Rumble? So what does he do then? What does he do then? Does he challenge Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? What about the Elimination Chamber? If The Rock is challenging Roman Reigns by winning the Royal Rumble, Cody Rhodes is going to get what at WrestleMania? Because that's destined for CM Punk and Seth Rollins. You would figure that if The Rock wins the Royal Rumble, that CM Punk is going to win the Elimination Chamber. Where does that leave Cody? Unless Cody becomes a fucking crybaby bitch and complains that I need to finish my story, blah, 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 and somehow we get this match into a triple threat at WrestleMania. Again, I see that narrative being tossed out there as well. Fuck off with a triple threat. The stories in a triple threat are always less than a one-on-one -on -one match. I don't know what we're doing. I really don't. It's just an awful idea. Now, the other rumor is The Rock versus Roman Reigns will not be taking place at the Elimination Chamber. Although it still appears that WWE will be going forward with the long-planned match of Rock versus Roman Reigns, it won't be happening at the Elimination Chamber on Saturday, February 24th from Perth, Australia, Optus Stadium. Now, this is coming from Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. He reported that there are no plans for the match to happen at the chamber, as Reigns was never scheduled for the show or advertised, and there are no plans for him for that date right now. So we're running with this narrative that Roman Reigns, oh man, Roman Reigns is not advertised yet. You know, uh, he's not going to be on the show. That's what we're running with now? You mean to tell me that Roman Reigns who already took, how, how many months did he take off? What was his last title defense against LA Knight? Nah, nobody, nobody gives a shit about that one. You mean to tell me that Roman Reigns took all this time off last year? Coming in on to the new year, he's going to be at the Royal Rumble, and he's going to take another two months off? Enough. Enough. Ridiculous. Here's another one. This stadium... They haven't even announced a match yet. There's what, 46, 47,000 tickets out the door for this show? Wait till they start announcing matches. 60, easy. You mean to tell me that Roman Reigns is not going to wrestle on one of the largest shows that WWE will do all year? Are you serious? Australia, Perth, Australia is paying for the WWE to enter their country, to entertain the people there. And you mean to tell me that they're not paying for Roman Reigns to wrestle on that show? You think they'll be okay? Yeah, you know what? It's all right. Roman Reigns is not wrestling. But we got Cody, though. The fucking cuck bitch. 
in this entire Rock Roman situation. You don't think Roman Reigns is wrestling in front of 60,000 people at this show in February? You got to be out of your fucking mind. You know, there are ways to now add him to the advertisements. You know, this was just something pushed out there that Meltzer wants to just, you know, you know what's not happening at the chamber? Because they don't fucking know. That's why. They don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Sap don't know. Meltzer don't know. Alvarez don't know. Mike Johnson don't know. Wrestle Geeks don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody. I don't know. All we could do is sit here and tell you what the logical situation is going to be. Or what it should be. Finish the fucking story. Rock Roman Chamber. Rock helps Cody by being a outside presence, a special referee, an enforcer, whatever the fucking case may be, and helps Cody wins the ti- helps Cody win the title at WrestleMania against Roman Reigns on night two. It's a very simple, very simple way to go about it. So theoretically, let, let's think about this. Rock potentially winning the Royal Rumble. Cody left out in the fucking dust somewhere. And this match with Rock and Roman not taking place at the Elimination Chamber. Every single rumor that comes out, I don't know anything for sure. All I could tell you is that whatever we discussed already, however we discussed it, is the best way. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. What I said, what I detailed for you, is the best way. Now, with every rumor, I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling that Seth Rollins and CM Punk are going to get their WrestleMania main event opportunity fucked. That's what I feel. What I honestly think with all these rumors going around and all this shit going around, that we may end up, and, and, and this takes me back to what The Rock said, we're, we're, we're going to do something unprecedented. We're going to do something that's never been done before. I'm, I'm going to need you guys to stop the narrative about night one and night two. WrestleMania is WrestleMania. There's going to be just as many people at night one as there are at, at, at night two or on night two. Stop. I have a feeling that WWE is going to push Punk and Rollins to open the show on night one. I think we're going to get Rock Roman night one. I think Rock is going to lose. Roman's going to go over. Brock will get his last match, and then Roman goes on to night two to drop the title to Cody Rhodes in the main event. How we get Cody there if Rock wins the Rumble, I don't know. You know, The Rock don't need to win the Rumble. The Rock does not need to win the Rumble. The Rock could be the shock to the system. Have him come in, have him ask for whatever he wants. He can get whatever he wants. Cody's the one working his ass off. Cody's going to choose Roman. Rock wants Roman. I genuinely feel, now, I don't really want this to happen, but I feel if there was any other option here, if you people don't want this match to take place at the chamber, then the best course of action is doing a double main event. Rock Roman and then Cody Roman. I don't like it. I don't like it. But at least you get the same end result. If you did Rock Roman at the chamber... What would be the result? Roman goes over. Roman Cody at night two on WrestleMania 40 night two. Cody goes over. You get the same result. Roman beats The Rock at the chamber. Cody beats Roman. Cody beats the guy that beat The Rock. Cody beat the guy that's unbeatable. If you do it on night one and night two and condense it to WrestleMania weekend, you're going to get the same fucking thing and the same end result. Roman beats The Rock. Roman drops it to Cody. Cody beats the guy that beat The Rock. Cody beats the guy that's unbeatable. Or none of this can happen, and we wait till SummerSlam to finish his story because WWE wants him to break Hulk Hogan's record. As if Hulk Hogan's record means anything. Don't understand it. Doesn't make Roman number one. He's still got Bob Backlund and Bruno San Martino to stare up at. So what difference does it make if he breaks Hogan's record? 
Oh, I know what it is. WWE is going to have have him break Hogan's record potentially so that they can call him the longest reigning champion of this generation in this generation's history. Whatever the fuck. It, they'll coin it in some fucking weird ass way where it's just disgusting. Or maybe not even SummerSlam. Maybe they wait till next year's WrestleMania or maybe somewhere in between. Maybe they'll do it at Madison Square. Go, who the fuck knows where they're going to do it? But I genuinely have a feeling that Cody Rhodes and Roman is going to take place on night two with Roman and Rock taking place on night one. Again, not my preferred choice, but at least we get the same end result and everybody gets their Roman and Rock WrestleMania match that they somehow cannot do without. Oh, I can't be at the chamber. Oh, The Rock will never wrestle at the wrestle at the chamber. I, I mean, 70,000 people is just uh, something to sneeze at to these fucking people. It's like, oh my God, The Rock will never wrestle at the chamber. I, I vividly remember that he beat CM Punk for the world fucking title. At the chamber. Or whatever it was. He wrestled Punk. Fucking break, man. I don't like it. And the, th the, the reason why I don't like it is because Punk and Rollins, you could say whatever, whatever you want about Punk, but Punk, him being back on WWE TV is better. They're better off for it. He's better off for it. Rollins. Take or leave with Rollins. You might not like Seth Rollins. You might find him to be cringy. You might find him to be boring. You might find him to be obnoxious, ob obnoxious but at the end of the day, the man has put his blood, sweat, and tears into that title. He has seemingly gotten better as we went on, as we continue on with this reign. After all that he did all year, you want him to bypass a main event WrestleMania spot that he's certainly earned and deserved? Now, I know we're going to give The Rock whatever he wants because we're not fortunate to, to get The Rock as often as we'd like. He's The Rock. He's the biggest Hollywood star in, in the industry. He's bigger than WWE, and I get it, but I don't like it because it's the same thing. You can plug in anybody there. In this case, it's The Rock. You're going to bring Mr. fucking part-time Hollywood guy who's never there it's once every four years to come in, take a WrestleMania spot away from somebody else that's been there, breaking his fucking balls, busting his back, and he deserves a WrestleMania spot, and he's not going to get it because The Rock's got to come on in, and he wants to do something unprecedented. And I find it funny how after 10 years, Punk is back with the same fucking story. I'm back to main event WrestleMania. I'm back to win the world title. And he won't be able to do that before he was able to do that. Now he's not able to do that because the guy who he complained about 10 years ago is in the same situation stopping him again. I don't like it. Just continue the current stories that you got and don't do anything to fuck them up. WrestleMania is okay without The Rock, believe it or not. We don't need The Rock. You could, if you do this at the Chamber, it's not going to change the way you look at WrestleMania. But again, I have a feeling that we're going to get this huge double main event. Something unprecedented, something that's never been done before. Roman's going to be wrestling twice at WrestleMania. That's my prediction. Do I want it? No. I would much rather take The Rock reigns and do it at the Chamber. Rock, Reigns, Chamber, Roman, Cody, WrestleMania. Again, we'll see. I don't know, but these rumors are ridiculous. They are absolutely fucking ridiculous. And finally, guys, AEW talents embarrassed by Tony Khan's latest Twitter tirade about Jinder Mahal. Tony Khan carried out his latest tirade on X this week as he took shots at WWE's booking of Jinder Mahal a wrestler who has won two matches since the start of 2022 and put him in a world championship title match against Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw. Tony Khan accused people of double standards for allegedly criticizing his decision to position Hook for an AEW world title match against Samoa Joe. Who criticized Tony Khan? That's what I want to know. Who? Who? Went on social media. And ruffled Tony Khan's feathers so much that he decided to go in and tweet about Jinder Mahal and Seth Rollins and how WWE does it, but nobody complains. 
who complained to Tony Khan on social media, who were the culprits that made this guy pick up his phone and decide to fucking burn the wrestling space down on social media this week? Who? Because I know it wasn't the AW fans. Bunch of no-name people got Tony Khan. The AEW fans, I'm sure, were excited about this match. It's a fresh match. It's a match that's probably going to take Hook to the next level. He's working with Joe, who worked with his father in TNA. I mean, who complained about this? And if they complained about it, all you needed to do was put out a fucking statement. Well, I think Hook deserves a title match. He's been 28, 27, and 1, whatever the fucking case may be. And I feel he deserves an opportunity at Samoa Joe in the World Championship. Be done with it. That's your decision. You gave a logical reasoning behind it, and you put your phone down. The tweets received a wide range of reactions from across the wrestling world, but Khan's latest tirade doesn't appear to have been well-received within All Elite Wrestling. Brian Alvarez reported that a number of AEW talents reached out to him, and they found Khan's posts embarrassing. Brian Alvarez says this, and I quote, Here's the thing. I got a lot of tweets. It was the same exact thing as last time. I got a lot of tweets from people in AEW who were like, Why is he doing this on Twitter? This is embarrassing. That's what they said. They said it last time, too. I'm sure he's aware of it, but he sees this as, look, look at this engagement. I get all these tweets, and then I can tweet out some promotion for some matches on Wednesday, and it'll help boost the rating. That's why he does it, Brian Alvarez stated. Oh, it helps boost the rating. That's why AEW drew 782,000 on Wednesday. So what promotion did you do for Dynamite? He did nothing for Dynamite, but embarrass Dynamite and embarrass AEW and embarrass yourself. I don't give a fuck what the impressions are on Twitter. Social media impressions, views on Twitter, likes and retweets and all this other fucking garbage. It's not going to translate to viewers watching Dynamite. Plus, your show, your show sucked on Wednesday. There's no fucking... St- you know what's going to get the viewers to tune in, TK? You know what's going to get You know what's gonna get the viewers to tune in? If you actually sit down and write and script out long-term storytelling. Then you got the AEW geeks, the AEW fucking... Oh, let me, let me fight for the honor of AEW. You got these fucking no-life degenerates who live for nothing but pleasing Tony Khan, Right? Oh, but Mariah May and Tony Storm is a story that's on TV. What are you talking about? Swerve and Samoa Joe and Adam Page. There's a story. I- I'm sorry. What, what's, what's the story? What's the story there? Page wants Swerve. Page doesn't want Swerve to win the title. Swerve wants to be the first African-American world champion in company history. Yeah, that's a great story. It's the start of a story, but I wouldn't say it's a story. You need to have dialogue and weeks of television built to tell a story. There's none. There's none. You can't just say, hey, I want the world title. Oh, that's a story. No, it's not a story. I want, I want a nice fucking uh, parfait for breakfast. I didn't even have breakfast yet. I want a nice bowl of yogurt with fucking banana and berries and fucking granola in front of me with a hot piping cup of coffee. Is that a fucking story? Does that, does that, Take me throughout the rest of my day? No. No, it don't. It's one part of my day. It's a narrative that I'm telling within the next hour. It's not a fucking story. It's not going to carry me through the rest of the fucking Saturday afternoon. Oh, people are telling me this story and that story and this one and that one. Why do you hate this? You're not watching the show. I had some geek tell me that I hate professional wrestling because I don't watch Rampage. Did you watch Rampage last night? How much storytelling happened on Rampage? Man, that Eddie Kingston Wheel of Utah match that was thrown in there for absolutely no fucking reason for a new championship that he just won. Man, what a story that is. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. None of what Tony Khan did is going to help boost viewership. It's going to drive viewership away. 
Khan has often taken shots at WWE on social media. Since founding it in 2019, he has stated in the past that AEW is very much the challenger brand within pro wrestling to WWE's number one, previously calling AEW the Pepsi of pro wrestling, while WWE are Coke. No, he's got that reverse. Pepsi's better than Coke. Fuck off. I don't drink soda, so if I was to take one over the other, it's Pepsi over Coke. But no, being number two is not that bad, bro. Being number two is not that bad. If you're worried less about being a challenger brand and worried more about putting on a damn good show and writing stories, then we wouldn't be in this situation. Booker T said this in regards to Tony Khan. That's funny, man. I swear to God, that's so funny to me being an insider, man. Being a guy that's been in this business for more than 30 years and to hear someone like Tony Khan talk about 28-1 and one winning streak like, bro, come on. We all know that this is the business of pro wrestling. What business this is. You don't have to be a winner to get a title shot, especially in professional wrestling. It's all about the entertainment more than anything. And for Tony Khan to really start to look at this business like that, it concerns me. And Booker T actually went out there and had another quote in regards to Tony Khan basically telling him that he should put his fucking phone down and not go on X again. I mean, can you disagree with him? Can you disagree with him? The, the pop that The Rock got, Jinder Mahal had a huge part in that. I would suggest Tony Khan delete X off his personal phone. It is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Fans have had enough. He's on social media every single hour tweeting about, oh, yeah, yeah Rampage. Oh, yeah. Huh, so I, I, think, I think Rampage was a great show. Oh, I think Collision was a great show. You are the boss. Leave the tweeting to the fans. You only open yourself, yourself up and become more susceptible to fucking online criticism, which in turn makes you tweet out bullshit like this. Is WWE wrong for giving Jinder Mahal a title match? Yes, they are. It's ridiculous. Nobody wants to see Jinder Mahal on TV. But don't sit there and fucking blame them for something that you are actively guilty of every single week. As of last night. As of last night. Can't do that, man. Can't do that. And to give WWE a little bit of slack, do I like it? Fuck no, I don't want to see Jinder Mahal on television. And Jinder Mahal shouldn't be anywhere near a fucking title match. I'd like wins to be developed on TV first and a challenge to be built up before we get a fucking championship match. But maybe there's a story that's going to play out there to determine Seth Rollins' Royal Rumble opponent. We don't know. I hope that's the case. I hope that's the case. Otherwise, what are we doing with Seth Rollins at the Royal Rumble? So we'll wait. And if it doesn't happen that way, we'll just continue to shit on the reason of why Jinder Mahal got a championship match. But Tony Khan needs to put his fucking phone down. Seriously. This is becoming, this, this is becoming very concerning. He can't go on social media and start blaming WWE for something that he's actively guilty of every single fucking week. And then in turn, he booked a terrible show on Wednesday because the Jacksonville Jaguars are not in the playoffs, and he let all this shit get to him on social media to a point where he delivered one of the worst dynamites of all time. Don't know. What do I know? When are you guys going to understand? Long-term booking, long-term storytelling is the key. You want to get people back, start scripting, engaging, interesting stories that let the people know and trigger a, 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 a fucking brain signal in, in people. Hey, man, I can't wait to watch Dynamite next week to see the next chapter of this story. Instead of, oh, man, I can't wait to watch this nothing match with no build because these two guys are great pro wrestlers. Well past that. WWE is putting on great matches. Impact is putting on great matches. AEW could fucking coma their way to a great match. It's not about great matches anymore. Stop using the excuse of great matches. They put on great matches every fucking week. How many top matches last year did AEW have on the list of top matches in 2023? Almost 75% of them were AEW. Stop. When you understand that telling stories is king instead of 
using it as a fucking excuse. Oh, you want them to be like WWE. No, I want them to be a fucking episodic television show that tells me stories, so I'm interested in watching. It has nothing to do with WWE. I want WWE to tell stories. I want AEW to tell stories. And I want Impact to tell stories. Tell me stories. Give me a reason to watch. If you don't, there's no reason to. Thank you guys very much for the support. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below. Please hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell for notifications. And go check out all the other content on the channel. There is plenty of it. Hit that thumbs up, guys. Let's try for 1,000 likes. And I will see you right back here with more news on OTS. I'll see you guys later.